well, welcome to Pantheon of the Geeks. You join us for a great unboxing of Twigs and Squigs. Twigs and Squigs, the newest <laughs> box from Games Workshop. <laughs> so here we have Lucas. So. Yes, and it sold out very quickly. Yeah, very. And we were very lucky to get two copies because we were. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think that's probably why it sold out because everyone was buying multiple copies of this thing because... The squigs are such a good deal on their own. Yeah. And then you got all the cool treatment in here. Um, yeah. yeah. So hopefully you were lucky enough to get hold of a copy of this if you wanted it. If you weren't, then you're just interested in watching the video. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the battle by the light of the bad moon. For some reason, I always tr sort of turn into a troll from World of Warcraft. He does when I start actually. talking about the bad moon. I've no idea why. But if I do it, I do apologise. It's getting it rather worrying now. It just now. happens. Uh, <laughs> it's one of those things, one of the many things that happens to me. I think it is the bad moon itself affecting me. I'm really struggling now not to start not, talking like... Not to like, start talking like Mon. Like, like um, Vol'jin, Vol'jin or something like that. I remember Vol'jin. Yes, I remember Vol'jin. <laughs> Good days of World of Warcraft. <laughs> um, right, so this is Loon Curve. Mm -hmm. And this is the box. Um, this is the back of said box. And that is the armies you get in it. So yes, plenty of models. Um, there should be one Arch Revenant and ten Tree Revenants and three Colonel Hunters. One Loom Boss and Giant Cave Squig. Ten Cave Squigs, two, cave, two Squig Herders, sorry. Five Boing Rock, boing rock Binders and five Squig Hoppers. Hmm. Um, obviously two brand new models in here. One's a completely new model and one's a remade model. Um, which needed updating. Uh, I don't even know if I did it on the video, but I predicted that they would do this uh, and it would be this. And yeah. I was just, just like, I just felt like in my bones that it was one of the models that needed doing and it would be squigs and it would all be squigs. Maybe, maybe from the trailer, kind of got the idea. And then obviously the trailer did give away like the root of the, the war. The root of war, is. yeah. But I did think there would be a new leader uh, in this as well. And I actually pretty much, when we were talking about it, yeah, I pretty much told to, this, this is probably what they'll put in it. Yes, we said Colonel Hunter. Yeah, because we, we, we were having a good discussion spikes. about what we thought would go in. Yeah. Anyway, we're boring you with this. So I'm going to open it. <laughs> Let's go! Let's see what's in here. So I don't really want to see the movie. So, this is part of our Tale of Two Gamers as well. Because it actually covers both series. Yes. Series one where, where you did uh, Silver Neck and Series two where I'm doing uh, squigs. So it's all good. Well, I think this is what pushed you over to getting the squigs once we knew this was coming out because you, you, you decided well, to, to be do fair, this, you your chose spits. them for me before I told you about this coming out. Well, I've chosen the spits, the yeah. spiders. It was mainly to the spiders, but then. And then this came out, and we were just so, like. I was going to start popping that one. No. I, just, I, just, I saw the goblin and started feeling mischievous. Oh, look at all that! I know. There are many sprues of this box. Awesome. So, that'll be the hoppers. Squig hoppers. That looks like the same as that. Yeah, so one of these will be bone rock bound and one of them will be hoppers, which is great. Uh, these are some of the cave squigs. I'm not sure. That's the, the main dude on mm -hmm. the squig. That's the new dude. Uh, Maybe we should put like a little counter every time to say squig. Squig, okay. Squig. Um, it's a tree revenant squig. Squig. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that'll be the Colonel Hunters. Yep. Along with these two as well. So we've got tons of sprues for tons of models. Then we have the Warhammer Age of Sigma. There you go. It's got cool. Oh, oh that's cool. awesome. That's a cool poster. That's, that's nice. We've got two more. Bases in there. So my base is hiding, looking at the bottom. And then we have the Loon Curse book. And we have some our War Scroll cards. For some reason the camera's not. Is that focus? There we go. War Scroll cards, and we have some little templates as well. Mm -hmm. Which is cool because if you don't have any models for any of these factions, you've got everything you need to play the, uh, the actual game here yes. by the looks of it. No dice, obviously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but they have so many dice. Oh, yeah, I suppose. So many, many dice. They're reliant on you having dice anyway, yeah. aren't they? You better get this. Right, so we have. Uh, we have Colonel Hunters with great bows. So that's what's in this box. Tree Revenants. 
uh, squeak herds, bone rod bounders, squeak hoppers, lean boss on a cave squeak with a cool new picture, <laughs> and the arch revenant is brand new. Uh, we'll take a look at that. Uh, if you've not been to the website uh, today, I don't know when this is going up, but it was today that we're filming this that they announced the battle tomb for the Silver Knife would be delayed. Um, unfortunately, closed in tears. I had to console her and everything. Uh, but what they also said uh, on on the website was there's three versions of this now, three uh, different versions uh, of the Colonel Hunters. I had a look on there. Uh, rules wise, they're identical apart from the great swords, which aren't shown on here. And I think they get. Uh, I think it's on a six. Don't quote me on this because I don't have the rules. Uh, I think it's on a six if they they cause an extra mortal wound. Um, the other thing I noticed was the envoys of the Ever Queen range has been updated to 12 inches. It's been reworded. Oh. I was reading the rewording to see if it, how it affected it. And it says original one says something about the general. Um, uh, if your general's a Sylvanath hero. And this one just says if any friendly Sylvanath hero. Uh, oh. So it's been reworded slightly. Um, but other than that, it's identical. And I, my gut tells me the only reason that they've split the cards up is because they've got three different unit costs. If you know what I mean. Um, yeah. So you might only be taking one unit, so you don't need all the extra, extra weapons and stuff on there mm. as well. Uh, Clouds them all already. So there we go. But for this box set, it looks like they're going to be built as um, archers. Archers. But that said, since you've already got a set, it's entirely up to yourself. <laughs> Probably will do archers because they are quite cool, um, and maybe do the other set if I'm allowed anything from the other set, and do them as. Do you feel like anything from the other well, set? Well, you might say no. All silver nephew. So we've got the rules for building all three types though, and uh, we've got the rule for the tree revenants, uh, which we've already built on our channel. We have uh, as part of the uh, first round. Of tell two gamers, so we're, not gonna build, so we're not going to build them as part of this video. No. But if you want to see us build those, you'll, you'll have to go back and have a look at our tell two gamers mm -hmm. for that. Uh, we will build anything we've not already done, which is all the squig stuff and the arch revenant because he's brand new as well. Yeah. And there's the rules for the blue boss put them together. There we go. So, uh, what we have here is the tokens. Let's have a look. I'm going to thick it. Command points charged. We have some of the little cauldrons, like the, uh, the endless spell cauldron. Oh, cool. Two rulers. Mirror prism. Double sided. Got the same on the other side. So these, I mean, we did. We never got Carrying Empire. I don't know if Carrying Empire has stuff like this in as well. Possibly. Um, uh, it wasn't. Because we, we weren't interested in the flashy at courts, and no. I already have all the skins apart from the leader, so I'm just going to wait until they release him separately. Um, but there we go, so that's the stuff. Now we've got the core rules, so we have all the core rules to you need to play. Just saying, well, again, I think the only thing we've got missing is dice. I don't yeah. know if it's meant to come with dice, I don't think it did. So it's meant to come with dice. Uh, no, no. The only thing you've got missing to actually play as a game straight away, obviously after you put them all together, is, is the dice. But the d6s, so you can grab any d6. And we have that many. We do. Uh, and here are the rules for link curse itself. So again, in the back, we've got the pitch battle profiles. And it only has the Colonel Hunters with great balls, there's 200 points. So I don't know if that, any of that's going to change when the battle team comes out. Uh, the Arch Revenant's 100 points, and uh, the Tree Revenant's, I think, I don't know if they've changed or not. You still have enough players out there, might know. But I think the uh, 110 points for the Cave Squig, Squig Herds, Squig Hoppers, yeah, they're all exactly the same. Uh, I do know that because I've been reading the Gleam Spiked Gets book quite a lot <laughs> recently. <laughs> so they're all exactly the same. Um, then the back, we've got the for some reason the camera doesn't want to focus to it. Uh, we've got the uh, the war scrolls. And then we have the uh, the war scrolls for each unit in here. So for all the silver that stuff, that is the rule. Um, Sacred Guardians. Units of this battalion are wholly within 18 inches of the Arch Revenant from the same battalion. Do not take battle shock tests. It's quite cool. 
We literally could feel this and the other box doesn't have. <laughs> and just take two of the war scrolls. That'd be awesome. And then the Zagat's Squiggle Launch. Tried to make that posh. <laughs> Definitely Squiggle Launch. Um, loads of squigs. Loom Boss Zagat is supported in his quest by seemingly endless streams of squigs. At the end of each of your turns, you can pick one friendly squig, herd, squig hoppers, or boing rock bounders unit from the battalion that has been destroyed to be replaced. If you do so, roll a dice on a fourth will say replacement unit with half the models from this unit was destroyed. Rounding, up fra rounding fractions up is added to your army. So, with the replacement or unit wholly within your territory or wholly within six inches edge of the battlefield, go on then, she's away from enemy units, each unit's probably can only be replaced once. So, it literally gives this, the squigs the same ability the Loon Shrine gives, the, the Moon Clans. Cool. That's actually really good. That should be. Well, that should be in this wiggle launch. I'm telling you, I need to reread that. I, should. I don't think it is. Um, so I started at the back, but the front of the book, I've got all the background here. I mean, in the age of me. I mean, so I've got the bad moon around it. Mm -hmm. Order and anarchy. There we go. So we have a little bit of lore here. Yeah. This will be interesting to read through. Well, actually. And then. Uh, the actual rules about the place. So, is it Ayada? How would you say that? Ayada? Ayada. Uh, Yoda? 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 No, not Yoda. Ayada. Yoda. Put your name, put your name. Yoda. <laughs> it's a real Yoda. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> Bad Moon Rising. Oh god, you said that right. Sundered Land. Not Sunderland. No, oh right, good. A Sundered Land. I, a Sundered Land, right, Sunderland okay. isn't mentioned, yeah. Uh, I don't know, maybe it is mentioned. Um, is that one of the new English spells? No, it's not, is it? No, so, it's a little spike, yeah, that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, and then we've got the front cover. The green and the bounding hordes. Should just be bouncing hordes, really. Uh, Defenders of the Enclaves. I thought you were going to say Defenders of the Earth. Then. Defenders oh. of the Earth. Defenders. Oh, right. Warriors of... Uh, uh, Ayada. Ayada? I'd say it's Ayada. Ayada. We'll go with that. Ayada. Warriors of... And the cool model with yeah, the new uh, Arch Revenant. And then some Tree Revenant. Mm -hmm. Smash. Many squigs. Uh, many, many squigs. Oh, And if you saw my last video, you probably saw I was working on a colossal squig anyway. I've had for years. <laughs> so my squig army is underway. Uh, infestation. So these are the... the this the page? No? Yes, yes, that's it. There we go. Uh, battle by the Loon Light and Battle Plans. So... I really do want to play through this. I really don't want to play through on camera actually, maybe we should. Maybe we should, yeah, if we yeah. build it the, uh, they the way... They will come. Mm -hmm. If we build it, they will come. Yes, so. if we build it, they will come. Cult yeah. of the head. <laughs> Cut of, off the head. That's, that's a cult of the head, honestly, from me, that. Cult Reading that sideways, that's exactly what it looked like. Cut off the head. Yeah, cut off the head. <laughs> Not cult of the head, which is what I thought it said. The flooded cavern, you can read that. I really want to play this. And then we're back to where we were. So, a couple of battle plans in there. The actual lore behind the box set. And some excellent models. So let's get on to the uh, the meat of this, shall we? Um, taking those off. Taking those off. Yeah. So I'm going to leave the two new models to the end. Last. And I'm going to stick together with the squids, which we've not done on the Earth channel before. So, where should two we begin? Let's start with some squid hoppers. So we're going to build one each of these, aren't we? Yes. Yes. So, uh, I'm going to move the camera in using the manual zoom function, and then we shall start. Okay, guys, so the Boing Rock Bounders and the squid hoppers all come from the same sprue. Uh, there's plenty of squig parts in here and plenty of poking lances, I can see. So let's get um, starting to cut off. So, to make the squig hoppers, it's 1 through 12. Um, and to make the boing rock bounders, it's 1 13. 
and 23. Okay. So what I might do is try and build them both at the same time. So stage one, um, we have part one, two and three. And there's two of those. So these, these are sort of like the sort of basic parts of the squig really. So part one, two and three, two sets of those. Part five, six and seven, two sets of those. And then, um, as well, that's where I'm reading anyway. Two of each. <laughs> I'll be six. Alright, oh, okay. Right, so we'll start here with one, two, and three. It, said it does say two of each, so uh, we'll get these parts off and then we'll uh, get them together. Okay, guys, so there's two each of these. Um, I thought there was five in a box, there's ten in a box, because we haven't had these before. Uh, so uh, that's cool, actually. So, the first one, one, two, and three, uh, we have part one, which is part squig. Um, and this part of a squig, which is part three. And then we have part two, which is this part of the squig. And that goes in there by the looks of it. Are you still doing your squig count? Sorry? Are you still doing your squig count? See how many times you can say squig. I might have to do it after the video. <laughs> That might take a week to actually publish the video though. I've said squig that many times. There you go. So this, ah, there we go. It's pretty upside down. There we go. So that goes on there like that. That goes on there like so. Go in there. There we go. So we're going to build two of those. We're going to build two of each. And then so we'll have five squig hoppers and five of the, the bounders. So that's that one. Five, six and seven. And that goes together the same way. We've got the uh, same sort of thing set up there. And then we have 10 11. 10, 11 and 12. Again, two of those. So I'm going to go ahead and stick these together. There is also two more on the other side. So we'll get those off and ready to, to put together as well. These are all going on the 32mm bases as well. Because uh, Just in case you're wondering, because there's 25mm, 12 of those. Those are for the uh, squig herds. And then these are for the Squig riders, squig hoppers, and will also be for the tree revenants. Right. Won't they? Probable. Uh, yeah. There should be, I imagine there's one. Well, there's two 40 mil bases, isn't there? Yeah. So that'll be for the cave squig and the arch revenant, probably. And the three will be for and the three for the yeah. yeah. There we go. Let's figure out which bases were for which. Right, so we're going to stick these together and then we'll be back and we can start on the next one. Okay, so there, oh, there it is, squig so far, and there is squig so far, and there is squig so far. <laughs> Next is squig, and then squig is 15, 16, and 17. There's two of those again, and then squig is 22, 20, and 21. There's two squigs there as well. And then we should have all these squig here. Squigs. Is it a squig or plural of squigs? Is it squigs? It, yeah, I don't know. Squigs? Squig. Squig. Squigatied. Squig, squig tied. Yeah. Right, so we'll get to this point. Uh, again, these are going together really easy. And then we'll move on to this next bit, which Oops. looks uh, interesting. So these are the. There are many, many things. These look like the mouths, and then you seem to be putting the front of the mouths together right and then i think from what i'm getting from this is any of them will fit on there do you reckon so two to twelve is the squig hoppers so we're going to be oh, building five so again i'm going to split these up so we've got five of each type so there's three there three there All right so two uh, of these uh two will go with the squig hoppers two will go with the bounders so put these together and then we can make a start on this bit Okay guys, so slightly confused with the instructions, but I want you to go through. Um, 2 to 12 is the squig hoppers. Um, this shows two times everything, two times everything, so on, as you can see there. Uh, you still build two times everything, regardless of how you're doing it, because this page, and then page... Oh, a second ago.
for this page, where we start 13 to 23, is the same all the way down to the last two boxes where we've got different heads and different arms. But up to that point, it's identical. So you still stick these guys together and you still get these to one side, stick these together, uh, stick these together and get all these parts to one side if you were, if you were taking them off the sprues. Um, and then we'll move on to the next page, just for anything else. Just show you how they got together on this page. So we've got the boss next. So obviously if you're making the boss and uh, you're going to be using a different uh, head and for the squig, draw for the squig. So you've got 37, 38 and 36 for the squig though. So you're not going to be using one of these for that. So this takes a little bit of planning out what you want to do really as to which two parts you want to stick together. But all these parts here, these are all the mouth parts which are going to go on to these parts eventually. And that's going to sit in there for instance. And you can see that one's got a little creature coming out of it. That's really cool. Well, um, and this one's got uh, is that a drool or a hand. We've got a hand coming out. So those are going to sit on this uh, bottom peg. The all the squigs go together in a similar way. These have got like side facing ones. So obviously that's going to go on there like that. That one's actually got a closed mouth. So that's something to consider when you're putting them together as well. If you want to be able to see like the thing in the mouth. You need to know which ones have got open mouths and which ones haven't. This one goes together top and bottom. This was side to side. And uh did have that together. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ah, oh, that's why. Ding bat. It's using the same part. Look very similar to some of these parts. So, um, yeah, there you go. So, you see how that one closes. So, before you stick any of these together, have a look how the mouth shut. So, you can see how much detail you're going to be needing to paint. Obviously, if you want to leave the bug open, the most open mouth you've got to paint the bugs and stuff inside. Because if you have the closed ones, it's going to be harder to get to it. You're not going to see them at all. So, that's how all these go together, basically. And the multi changeable. So, they go on any of the squig bodies. Um, this is the boss one, isn't it? Yeah. This is two of the three parts of the boss one. Um, there was another part as well. Uh, was this 37? And 36. 36. Uh, there is another bit which is 39, which oh, is like a little jaw yeah. part. Yeah, here we is are. That like, is that like metal? Looks like it. Yeah, so yeah. it's an armoured piece which goes on the bottom. Right, I've got it here, sorry. So that's how the squigs go together. Um, so what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to stick all the squig parts on now. I'm going to, okay. I'm going to deviate from from the instructions slightly. To squig, to squig, to squig. Stick all the faces and mouth parts onto the squigs, and then I'm going to come back and do the goblins. So we're going to do all this bit, if you will, and then also going to do all the uh, ones. So I kept all that page, told you. Bung or binders, I'm going to do all this bit and I'm going to stick them onto the bodies because that seems to be the most logical way to do this because you've got bits everywhere. And then I'll come back and we'll go through the instructions on sticking the goblins together to go on them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So they're all pretty much the same. Obviously, I've got two of these. So one of these is going to be for the binders, one of these is going to be for the squig hoppers. And then I'm going to pick. Um, some of these to go on as well and see which ones I want to stick them on. Try and vary it a bit, I don't want to stick the same head on the same body just to make it look a bit different. And then we'll come back and have a look at the squigs, done, and then we can move on to the goblins. See you in a moment. Okay guys, so quick change of plan. This is where we got to the box. So you can stick together the, the, the face and everything like, like we said. However, the goblin is attached via a sort of peg which does go in the um, like that. I don't want to pull it out because it is stuck in because there was plenty of glue around that. I didn't realise there was a gap. I thought it would sit over them. But they actually lock in like that. So you've got to put this in at the same time as everything else, which is why the instructions are all the way they are. Makes sense now. 
Um, sometimes you've got to build one of these to, to understand why they've laid it out the way they have. So this, if you scratch no. this. Sorry, the head. I don't want the head, I just want the book. Sorry. Yep, go. So this, um, it's a good copper boss. So as you can see here is where the, the head of the um, the head assembly. So this is this is part um, which part was this? Which one? This the, was the, the body. body. Yeah. Part four. Uh, four? Yeah. So part four, which would be this bit. So then you've got to build the body as it says there. Um, and then that brings you to this bit where you put the head on, which is part forty six and forty five. And then you stick that on first, and then you stick the squig's face on and everything like that. So that's the way you've really got to build these. Um, unless you build them really quick and the glue's not dry and you can just wedge it in like I did there. Which is the reason why I haven't put anything else on that. I just want to get that part in place. And then I could show you what was going on. Right, so there should be two four bodies. And then body eight and nine go together to make that. Body 14 and 13 go together to make that. 18 and 19 go together to make that. And so on. So I'm going to build all these now. Because of my task model. Uh, I'm going to build these together. And then we can go through the rest. So obviously part 4 is on that. And then we have the two combined parts. 8 and 9 which gives you the goblin which is hanging on for dear life. And then we have part uh, 14 and 13. Which is sort of a sitting position. Uh, sort of semi sitting falling off position for the next one which is 18 and 19 and then that one there is foot up in there that's um, 23 and 24 so you have to build these parts first to get them ready to go on to the next but um, as it also says on there you can get the head ready and the arms ready as well and obviously we're building a box there's one left over from the heads one left over from the arms so to finish the boss off from where we're at um, we need part 46 and 45 which is the the head and then this uh, spiked hood that he's got so those two parts just go together uh, like that and I believe that will fit in there like that there we go get it right get it right so that goes together so it's at a weird sort of crooked angle really isn't it it comes off his head like that. Okay, and then his weapon is part fifty-two, was it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's this, uh, like, mean on a stick type thing. So you see that that's going to go on to his arm. His head's going to go on. And well, from where we're at now, that'll be a finished model. So we'll do that. And then the squig hoppers, they all go together in a similar sort of way that I said with that. Now we've got the riders uh, separate. What I'll do, I'll stick all them on and then we'll come back and put the heads on. In fact, we can even do that at the same time to save some time. So we've got the heads, there they are. They're just going to go obviously on there. They'll go on anybody by the looks of it. And um, then we just need to stick on the weapons. So, weapon wise, do these bodies, are these thingies bodies for specific, they seem to be for specific No, things. I think they're, they're, all, they're, interchangeable, they're all interchangeable, along with the arms I would yeah. change. If they are, I'll be back to tell you, but other than that they look like they're interchangeable. So, once you put the arms on, you're done, really. So we'll get the arms off and ready, and they can go on. So again, that's part 53 through to 57. So I'll just pick four of those I like best. Because obviously one of them's already taken up with the, uh, the the boss. And we'll stick them on. So literally, we should come back. I don't think there's anything else to do after that. And come back and show you the squig hoppers finished. Back in a moment. Okay, so here's the five squig hoppers. When you figure out how they go together, they're actually really awesome models. So there is the boss of the unit. And then we have this guy. I love the, the way this guy's sort of falling off. 
<laughs> I really like that head with that body as well. He looks like he's really enjoying himself. <laughs> he's much more enough. Yeah, this guy looks a bit more worried. Maybe he's about to hit like a cave roof or something. It's got like a classic squeak off a weapon or the the the, uh, the mace with the uh, nails in. Oh, did a good choice there then. Yeah, it's really <laughs> cool. And then there's the other one. That's the one-eyed squig with uh, which is leaping the highest down on. So we've got so they seem to be interchangeable unless I got really lucky and just put them in the right ones. The first one I put on I didn't think it was gonna go on and then it just it just slid into play. So I presume they're all just multi-part interchangeable, which is awesome because it when you get a few kits you can make them all a bit different. It does say here interchangeable yeah. parts, so a bit more. Uh, the one thing you may have noticed is we did the wrong hood for this guy yeah. earlier in the video. Uh, that's part 46. Uh, this other one is for the, for the next boss. Yeah, well you can keep so, that. So I'll need that. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's do the bangers, bang, bang, not bangers, or whatever the hell they are. So you'll be wanting the same bodies then? Because that's what yes. we are looking at it, so I'll get the same so bodies. So resetting off, if you will, those are the bosses, and I'll need to pick some of these. We've got the same one each of those. And then we need the same bodies again, so it's exactly the same, isn't it? Yeah. So it's four, so we'll put those together. And then we've got the different heads, so we've got like the ones that got like the knight's helmets on. These guys are awesome, actually. We've got 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, and 63 to choose from. And then we have these lances, <laughs> these, these poking sticks, which are awesome. Uh, so the... I think it matters what you put on the boss, but the boss in this one, obviously we've got, ouch, what was that? <laughs> we've got a six, sorry guys, I don't even know what that was. Um, I'll have to go and investigate in a second. So he's face 64, and then like I said before, the other part of the head is, is 65. Again, so we can still, what I've actually been doing, I'll be sticking the mouthpiece in first and just resting the goblin on top of it. It seems to work quite well. And then this one's used part... 17 it's quite cool actually it's got like a skewered mushroom on i might use the same bit on there and then same face as as the other bosses squig and then we're done really um that's that one and then let's have a look so then the other are just exactly the same apart from you using lances and the different heads let's have a look on the next page try to make sure i'm not missing anything again um here we go Right. That's it. So yeah. So I'll go ahead and I'll stick these guys together. So we should come back with another finish unit. Okay, so here are the other guys. I really like these. I like the idea of, of goblin knights on squigs. <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah. Very cool. Barely hanging on. I do like that. Mm. Really cool. That guy's just in proper charge mode. <laughs> now we have the boss, complete with mushroom lance. Brilliant. They're really good. They're, they're, they're as good as I thought they'd be. Yeah. If not better. Cool. I thought they'd be cool. Right. The next ones we'll put together then is the Squig Herd. Okay, so we need the Squig Herd book. Oh, we need the Squig Herd spoon. So we are. Hoping these will be slightly easier to understand. So. Okay, so looks like we get the Squig legs first. Yep, so there's five there. And then there's five on the next page. And then we have the mouth pieces. Okay. Also, they're interchangeable again. I'm just getting ahead, guys, just to make sure. And then we have some squig herder options. Right. So, from the very beginning, then, uh, this is going to be ten squigs. So, there's going to be parts two, one, and three. 5, 4 and 6, 8, 7 and 9, 11, 10 and 12, 14, 13 and 15, 
And then we have five other squigs. Which is 17, 16, and 18, 20, 19, and 21, 23, 22, and 24, 26, 25, and 27, 29, 20, and 30. Right. And these are the 25 mil bases that these are going on. So there's 12 25 mil bases, 10 for the squigs, 2 for the herders. Sounds good to me. So let's get all those parts off and then we can have a look at them and stick them to the bases. Okay guys, so we've cut off all the parts. Um, this for instance is this part here. This is part 30. And then we have part 28 and part 29. Which is the... So this is all the parts to make the, the lower half of the squig. So these are going to go together. Um, I think that just locks in there. It's kind of like the other ones, just a bit smaller. Uh, that locks in there, and then that locks in the other side. There's little grooves as to where each leg will lock in. And it looks like it's the same on every squig, to be honest. That's that one. And the next one's well, yeah, they've all got the same attachments. So I'm just going to go ahead and build all these and stick them to the bases because it looks pretty straightforward. If there's any issues, I'll be back in between. Otherwise, we'll see you in it together. Okay, so here are the squigs bodies together, all ready to rock. So you can see, um, I think I held them the wrong way around. I did the same with the other ones as well. I assume, keep assuming that the squigs tails pointing up, they're all pointing down because of the sort of where they're bouncing, which makes more sense. So you can see that they've got the uh, the gap. They're all the same way around. Look me, <coughs> gap like that, and the legs just fit on. Really straightforward. So next up we have the head, is that right? Yeah, so these are all interchangeable parts. So we've got 33, um, 31 and 32. Mm -hmm. Is that a horn? That's a horn on that all right, one, so yeah. Alright, so it goes in that head so socket. So it goes in right, that head okay. socket there. Uh, you've got 34 and 35 and 36, which is just like the teeth at the front. You've got a drill coming out of it. Yes, he has. Oh, cool. Um, 37 and 38, that's a two-parter. Uh, 39 and 14, 41. Um, makes that one, so that's yep. a three part. This one's a four parter, yeah. So you've got 42, 45, 43, and 44. Yeah, that's like the mini eyes one. Many eyes, many eyes. Cool. You've got this one, which is 46 and 47. Looks like he's got legs coming out of his mouth. Yeah, um, you've got 48 and 49, right? Um, you've got 51, 50, and 52. That's like one of those anglerfish. Heads, oh, almost. Cool. Um, 54 and 53. I don't know if I said that one. Um, 56, 55, and these little teeth are 57. Cool. <clears throat> so it's like they go together like that, and then they're interchangeable with the bodies. With the bodies, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So we'll stick these together, and we'll see what's next. <clears throat> okay, guys, so the next page, we're on to uh, this bit, which is sticking the heads onto the bodies apparently they are will go on anybody so uh, i will test that theory by randomly allocating them we also have four uh pieces of sort of fluff to go on the bases and we have the we have the this little guy here with little moon face if you've seen this at all it's like a reptile rat type thing that's 73 and we have this mushroom Quite a cool mushroom with a curly anti gas mushroom. Then we have mini sort of grimacing mushroom. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if the camera's going to make that out. But You're not going to make that out, but it's like. It's got a face look, look. grimacing on it. Yeah. Then we have the greatest model I've ever seen anywhere, ever. <laughs> Full stop. The slug of doom. The slug of doom. He's brilliant. Look at him. He's awesome. He's like a mini version of the uh, Nurgle slug, <laughs> only cooler because he's got like mushrooms on his back and he's, and he's mini. It's brilliant. I love that. <laughs> so <laughs> it's really terrible. As soon as I saw it, I was like, that's brilliant. Uh, so I'm going to stick the squigs together and we'll get the parts off for the, uh, the squig herders. So I'm going to go with the bagpipes because bagpipes and goblins should always have been together. And we're going to go with the squig herder with the mushroom. Um, cause I've got another set of these, so I'll build the other two with the other set. So I'm going to be building them all anyway. But 
for this video we'll build um, those. So it's, um, where is it, 59 and 58, 61 and 77. Look at these guys. And then here, uh, 63, 62, 68, 69, 72, lot parts, 70, 71, and on, on to its base. There we go. So we'll get those bits off, we'll stick the squigs together and we'll be back in a moment. Okay guys, so just to show you how cool these squigs are. I really do like them, they're very cool. Again, you can put any of the pads with any of the body, so you can them in different positions. So I'm quite glad I've time to put the second set together, at least can make it a little different. Probably my favourite one is the uh, the angler squig. That's just so cool. <laughs> right, so now we need to make the squig headers. As we said about the parts before. So this guy, he's going to go together. So that's which one's 77, that bit. Yeah. So we have the legs. Oh, that's right. We have the legs. And we have the body. And, uh figure out how they go together. So that right, so the knife piece. Alright, so it goes like that basically. So the foot's going forward and the knife's going backwards. Then on top of that we'll go the piper, but he needs part 77 going on the so is it what is part 77? Is that part there isn't it? Yeah. Figure out where that goes to be fair. Is it part of the bagpipes? Looks like it. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll figure out where that goes and return with him together. In the meantime, let's put together the other guy. The other guy. So we're going with the mushroom guy. So mm -hmm. that's 63 and 62. Those two. Why oh, they go together? Straightforward by the looks of it. That will go on there. And uh, 68 is on the arms. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's going to go into the gap that's left. What's that? That's oh, uh, mushrooms. mushrooms on the that back. goes on his back. And we've got his head. Then we have the parts room there on, on the end of the uh, rod. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyway, <laughs> moving on. And then we've got part 70, thankfully, which is going to go on the end of that. Um, and then we're going to stick that to the base. So uh, we'll put these two guys together, come back with two models. Okay, so there it is. Guy with the mushroom. Exhausting, actually. Like and there is the pipe. And that weird 77 part, it fits between the back of the mushroom and the shoulder on that side. Just in the, you can probably see where that shining glue part is. That's where it goes. Um, there we go. So those are the two herders for these guys. And there's a few bits on the squigs where the joins uh, could do with a bit of filling. Not a lot, just a little bit. Other than that, they go together really well, and I really like them. I'm really glad I've got two units of them as well. Because I can make it a bit different. I can build the other two guys. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> awesome. Right. So, we've seen all the squigs so far. Now we're going on to the big squig. The uh, loom boss on a giant cave squig. So, uh, this is obviously the new model. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been needing one of these models because they will out of date a bit. I mean, it looks alright if you've got it. I quite like it. I was, I was actually going to get it. And then there's a Forge World one as well you can get. If you can get all the Forge World stuff. Now, I was actually contemplating that. 
but hoping a plastic one will come out and thankfully one did. <laughs> so there we go. So it was pretty straightforward to put together. There's not a lot of steps because that's the end basically. So we've got one and three, four and two. And we've also got seven and eight. So one and three are the main parts of the body. They're like they they just snap together. Four is the face, two's the tongue. So that's gonna go inside the and seven and eight is the leg, the left leg, um, and foot. So we'll get those parts off first. Get those together. Okay, so uh, one and three. These two parts go together first. Yep, yeah, they form that shape. And then we have the face. I'm just gonna go over that whole lot. Face. And then we have the tongue, which uh, I think that'll. F I might put that in where I'm putting that together. It looks like it should go in afterwards. That shouldn't really be a problem. And then we've got the two parts of the leg, seven and eight. Stick those two bits together and then attach it to the side of the body. So we're back in a moment. Okay, so this is where we're up to. See on that. Then we have the other leg to go on, which is part five, also on part five. Little moon face. That needs to go on to the bottom there, because it's amongst the, uh, the other mushrooms and stuff. Oh, wait a minute, I missed that. It's a spider thing. <laughs> right, so ten and nine go together. That's another weird thing. And then it goes on the bottom where I slid it. And then we have this part here, which is part of the foot. Oops, I dropped that one. That's gonna go on the side there. So we'll stick those together and we shall stick them to the side of the squig. And then we can start over here. So onto the boss. We need part twelve, part eleven, and part thirteen. So they're like two sides of his body, with the top half of his head in between. So we'll get that stuck together, and then we stick on parts fifteen and fourteen on either side, and that'll be his legs. So we'll get those on, and then we'll come back. So we've got the squig on the base. That. And then we've got Loom Boss so far. So he goes together like that. There are little uh, locks, you can see there on his on his arm, which uh, locks him into place. The legs are the same. So they only go on one way. Uh, so we need to add on part 21 and 20, which is basically his back and his cowl. And they attach together like like that goes on top of that basically. <laughs> you can see there on the picture. And then that goes on to um try to show you. So it's gonna go over there. And then it's gonna go on to his back. Then we have his uh, left arm which is holding on to the squig. And again that goes into place. And then we've got the choice of weapons so you can either have the uh, the knife type thing, what's the name of it? I can't remember. Or the sticker. I'm gonna go with the sticker because that's the the one that the box arcs dots and plus I've got two so I can do the other one the other way around. And uh, that's two parts, that's seventeen and sixteen, and again you've got a little thing there, a little hole there to connect them up. And then he sits on top of the squid. So he goes there his little grooves where he sits. So we'll put him together and come back with the finished model. And there he is. Done. It's pretty cool actually. Awesome. I'd advise sticking the model and the the arm to the squid because he's kind of holding on to that bit and his feet sort of fit into those grooves before putting the weapon on. Uh, unless you paint him separate, then just try and line him up and best you can, I'd say. There we go. So that leaves whoop, that leaves the Arch Revenant. Yay. One Chloe's been waiting for. 
What all the silver players have been waiting for. The new model. And that is the Arch Revenant. Does look awesome. Is it a male or a female? Is it's a hard to say, to be quite honest. It's a bit... It's a silver net. Yeah. It doesn't need to be male or female, I suppose. Mm. Uh, but there we go. So, we have part four and part five. And then we have part six and part seven, which make part of the cloak. Part eleven and ten, which make part of the head. Eight and nine are the leg. So if we get all these bits off, we'll put them together. Okay, so parts four and five, I'm trying to figure out how this goes together. Uh, if you can see that bit there, this bit will fit on like that. And then we have the two parts of the cloak. Seven and eight. So, which way around is that? It's that way, and that's that way. It's like, yeah, it goes like that. Cool. So, that'll need to be glued on there. And then those two bits will go together. In the meantime, we have the hair, which is part 10, and part 11, which is the, the helmet face. Helmet face. Whichever it is, is it? It's kind of a helmet. glowy helmet, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So those two parts are going to go together. And then we have the other leg, which again is two parts. So it fits together a bit like the other one. Those two parts go on there. And they will attach onto the, onto the rest of the body, into that stance. So we'll get this bit together. If there's any issues, we'll be back. Otherwise, we'll see you in a moment. Okay, so we're back. There is the Arch Revenant. It is very feminine looking. Mm. Gotta say that. Now I've had a proper look at it. Yeah, it's very cool. <laughs> um, next up we have 12 and. What's that one? 15. 15. So that's a shield, mm -hmm. which has. Cool. On the yeah. back. It's got detail on the back as well. Mm. And it's got, it's got two little uh, dots that that attaches to. Then we have some base detail, which is this big giant skull, or whatever it is. Yeah. It's like a giant skull. Which is three parts, is it? Yeah, so one and two go together. One and two. And then is... three attaches. I don't know. Uh, that's one. three, yeah. Right. So that's one. So those two will attach together and that attaches together. So then we can put it on the base yeah. and she'll be, oh, I'm going to use she, she'll be stood mm -hmm. on the skull. Mm -hmm. And then we have the cool, uh, what's yeah, cool? 13 you know, the glaive. The glaive. So um, this part goes, it's like armour, isn't it, on the front? Yeah, it's like a. Yeah, so that's going to go yeah. on the front and then that's going to go on as the arm. Mm -hmm. Then over here we have the other cool part the Zephyr Sprite. Yeah, so this is basically a mount. It is, yeah, because this model can fly, basically. Yeah. And it is classed as a mount for all intents and mm -hmm. purposes. So we have part 17, 16 and 18, 18 which create this beast which then goes on the back. Mm -hmm. I think that's it then, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right, so we will uh, finish putting this together. Yeah, it looks like it just attaches via the when it's going onto the back. And then um, we'll come back with the finished model. Okay guys, just a quickie. So the Zephyr's wings go on where the two holes are, and they are at a slightly different angle, so don't try and line them up. I was trying to line them up there, I had a quick look at it, and they're not quite in line with each other, because of the way they stood. And um, it goes onto the back of the model using that clip there. So that's what it should look like before it goes on. Back in a moment. And, voila. Cool. Still drying a bit, so I'm trying to be a bit careful. But, there she is. <laughs> What do you think? Nice. Absolutely what do you nice. Home think? Mm? What do you guys think at home? Yeah. It's pretty damn awesome actually. That's a nice addition to uh, the uh, Silver yeah. F, definitely. Definitely a bit nice. fiddly to get this bit on at the front. Mm. Oh, oh. Well, it survived. <laughs> That's the main thing. 
bit fiddly to get this branch bit on just to find out where it goes. I think it's in the right place. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like it's in the right place to the picture. There we go. So she doesn't stand alone, but she will do for this video, unfortunately. So that's the last of the models. Uh, Claire's just going to read out the, the rules for the Arch Revenant and yeah. show you the war scroll. Yeah. So um, we've got um, the uh, Arch Revenant is accompanied by a Zephyr Sprite that attacks with its tail pincers. For rules purposes, it's treated in the same manner as a mount. And this model can fly. We have a Crescent Shield. So at the start of the combat phase, say whether this model is using their shield for protection or to steady their weapon. If they use the shield for protection, you can re-roll save rolls of a 1 for attacks that target this model in that phase. If they use the shield to steady their weapon, you can re-roll hit rolls of 1 for attacks made with this model's Revenant's Glaive in that phase. We've got Champion of Kernoth. Re-roll hit rolls of 1 for friendly Kernoth hunters units while they are wholly within 12 inches of this model. Um, we have ultimate sacrifice. So once per battle when you allocate a wound or mortal wounds to this model you can choose to negate it. If you do this model cannot fly or use its Zephyrite's tail pincers attack for the rest of the battle. So basically the sprite on the back takes the takes hit, the hit and, then and disappears. Yeah promptly dies so you can't use it. I imagine it. it's sort of like all the ethereal. Probably, um, yeah. Back later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it dies. <laughs> it dies. <laughs> and they have to go to the shop and buy a new one. <laughs> Probably do. Yeah. Command abilities, we've got call to battle. You can use this command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, pick one friendly Sylvaneth unit wholly within 9 inches of a friendly model of this command ability or wholly within 12 inches of this of a friendly model with this command ability that is your general. Add one to the attack characteristics of that unit's melee weapons in that combat phase. You cannot pick the same unit to benefit from this command ability more than once per combat phase. Stop bullying her. So, yeah. There we go. Yeah. So, that's the... That's the card. That's the card, guys. If you haven't seen it already. There we go. Yeah. So this is a fantastic box set. It is actually. I do like it. Um, get some fantastic models in there. And I love these. I love these squigs, even though they've been out since. I think they've well, been out since January, haven't they? It's not been out. No, but. But it's the first time I've I've put them together. I think they're awesome. She's awesome. She is actually. Yeah, she's. And like I said, they've been needing a new giant squig boss. That is a cool model, though. It's very mm. funky. Quite like more. Yeah. Like Right guys, so that is our unboxing of Lean Curse. Hope you've enjoyed it. It's also a continuation of our Tale 2 Gamers. Mm -hmm. Because these goblins are going into Season 2. Uh, the Arch Revenant and Friends won't be in Season 1 because that'll be basically the box sets that we have from that. When yeah. we do the finale battle, you just need to unbox uh, a, a, lariel. a Lariel. And then um, we'll play the final battle for that. But uh, we want to get on with uh, putting these guys together. Yeah. So... In the next video, we'll probably be unboxing the Fire Slayers to fight mm -hmm. the Goblins. Um, yeah. So, these are my many, many squigs. So, we'll figure out how many points costs your box size, which is what we're going to be doing. You're going to be buying the box. It's a bit like we did in Season 1. I'm yeah. going to be just matching it with points-wise this time. Yeah, As to whatever amount of points of Goblins there are, because there's no Goblin starter so. This, well, this is kind of a Goblin starter set, I suppose. It's like two starter sets bolted together, this game. This is excellent. Mm -hmm. um, I hope they do some more of these. I want to see some Iron Jaws. Yes. Versus Card and Overlords. That'd be brilliant. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Brilliant for me. Oh, <laughs> both, yeah. Both my factions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they can fight each other. Um, <laughs> but there we go. So that's uh, that's next. I'll probably also get a Mangler Squig in a future video. Um, because with this... And the second set of Loon Curse uh, and a Mangler Squig. I think I've pretty much got a Squigger Launch. Squigger Launch. Squigger Launch. Proper Squigger Launch from the book. Um, and a Squig Peed. Squig Peed. Yeah, and, uh, and a Squig Squig. squig. Many Squigs. So I need as many Squigs as I can to, to, like, especially jumping on the top heads of dwarfs and not mind fire so much. Um, 
Although I'm, I'm interested to see how Linkos plays out. But maybe we should do that as a side project. We'll play the, yeah. the Linkos um, as well. Because we're going to be paying these. Yeah, aren't? definitely. These yeah. are kind of our main armies, really. Um, your your main armies. Silver. It is. Yeah, and then Stormcast, probably, and then Fire Slayers. Yeah. And mine's kind of destruction. Or mine's a bit of everything, really. Yours is just destruction, isn't it, really? Yeah, Iron Jaws and. Iron Jaws, more Iron Jaws. Yeah. And now some Gloom Spike gets to go with it. <laughs> so, yeah. So, stay tuned for all that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, let us know in the comments if there's anything you want to know about Loon Curse. I can stick it in the comments as well. Uh, other than that, you guys take care and uh, we'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye for now. Bye.